astronomer Robert Williams intended to direct the Hubble Space Telescope towards an unremarkable area of the sky for 100 hours in 1995. His co-workers rebuked him since they believed it to be a bad idea and a waste of the telescope's valuable observing time. As the head of the Space Telescope Science Institute, he had access to 10% of the observing time, therefore the criticism didn't matter. With it, anything was possible. Williams stated that he would retire from the position if nothing noteworthy came out of it. Therefore, between December 18th and December 28th, Hubble fixed his attention on a section of sky close to the handle of the Big Dipper that was only a little over January 30th th as wide as the full moon. 342 images of the area were captured by the telescope, with each exposure lasting between 25 and 45 minutes. And it turned out that the area of the sky that appeared to be empty was actually packed with galaxies. Over 3,000 emerged, some of which were about 12 billion years old. Images of galaxies of all shapes and sizes, including spiral, elliptical, lenticular, red, blue, orange, and yellow galaxies, revealed the universe in ways that scientists could never have predicted. This merged image is currently referred to as Hubble Deep Field. Astronomers desired more data despite Hubble Deep Field's impressiveness. The $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope ultimately gave that opportunity almost three decades later. By the middle of 2022, Cycle 1, Webb's long-awaited first year of scientific observations, had begun. Two of its Cycle 1 programs stared at different little patches of the sky for dozens of hours, searching for far-off galaxies in the early universe. Astronomers did not anticipate anything extraordinary. They anticipated that these two short period cycle one programs would provide them with an improved version of the Hubble Deep Field. Instead, to their surprise, such galaxies suddenly appeared in their field of vision. Galaxies that must have existed in the first 200 million years after the Big Bang have just been discovered by astronomers. The abrupt opening of Webb's windows to the last significant undiscovered period in the history of the universe excited the scientists. But those galaxies were not at all what we had anticipated. They were instead incredibly luminous and had stellar masses that were billions of solar masses. These enormous developed galaxies defy the predictions of our accepted theory of the development of the universe. So, where did we go wrong in our models? How can the James Webb Space Telescope's latest extragalactic sightings be explained? And most significantly, do these findings indicate that the Big Bang Theory is incorrect? Let's go back to the time when it was thought that the universe first originated in order to solve the puzzle. All four of the known fundamental forces had already separated from one another in the first second following the Great Bang. The initial particles that make up the universe were extremely hot and dense. Helium and other extremely light element nuclei started to develop during the course of the following three minutes as the cosmos expanded and cooled. In 400,000 years, the universe will have become sufficiently cold for atoms to form. About 150 million years later, the first stars were born, bringing an end to the Dark Ages. These enormous stars, known as Population 3 stars, were primarily hydrogen and helium-based, lacking heavier components seen in current stars. They created the first proto-galaxies, or the gas clusters that clung to massive, invisible structures made of dark matter. These proto-galaxies were brought together by gravity to create massive galaxies. It is estimated that this complicated process took a billion years to complete. Webb's observations, however, cast doubt on the entire paradigm. Numerous of these tiny protogalactic fragments that haven't yet merged to form a massive galaxy, according to astronomers, should be visible. They are observing a few objects, though, that are already massive galaxies. One of them, with a redshift of 13.1, is GLZ-13. In astronomy, redshift is represented by the dimensionless number z, where z equals zero represents the present. Additionally, as its importance grows for distant objects, so do its distance and our look-back period. 
It's a big deal to identify galaxies above a redshift of 11, yet Hubble could only find one in its 30 years of searching. Webb, on the other hand, is an infrared observatory, so it can easily look into areas of the universe that even Webb couldn't. The redshift of GLZ-13 indicates that it was created 300 million years ago. The earliest redshift observations were photometric, which means they were made without spectroscopic analysis by observing the galaxy via various colored filters. Astronomers hypothesized that there might be a problem with the redshift value because the photometric redshift isn't very accurate. The Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA, in Chile, suggested that's not the case with this candidate, though, in their follow-up observations. The redshift is indeed about 13. Furthermore, GLZ-13 has a mass of a billion solar masses, which defies our theories about how stars form. This is due to the fact that you would not be able to get that huge so quickly even if you took everything that was available to form stars. And why can't we observe star formation in contemporary galaxies if it was really occurring so quickly and effectively? The Lambda CDM model, which is our standard model of cosmology, has difficulty explaining these data. In this context, CDM stands for cold dark matter and Lambda for dark energy. Astronomers are currently working tirelessly to integrate Webb's data into the many cosmological theories. The Lambda CDM hypothesis, for instance, suggests that high-mass star formation may have been quite effective in the early universe. This is due to the high temperature and gas pressure, which have a significant impact on star formation. Perhaps even magnetic fields played a significant role in moving matter to spark the birth of stars earlier than we previously believed. Another straightforward explanation is that early universe galaxies might have had little to no dust, which would have made them appear brighter. The contentious notion of modified Newtonian dynamics, or MOND, may also be supported by the Webb observations. According to the MOND hypothesis, which was put forth in 1983, dark matter does not exist and its effects can be explained by significant variations in gravity. Webb's early observations are consistent with the concept that many phenomena can be explained by MOND rather than the Lambda CDM model. The Big Bang Theory isn't incorrect even if the James Webb Space Telescope has discovered dozens of galaxies that don't match our cosmological models. This is due to the fact that it has been supported by a large body of observational evidence over the past century that cannot be ignored. For instance, the Big Bang makes precise predictions about the amount of each element that was created in the early universe. The abundance of each chemical element that astronomers observe in very old galaxies and stars supports the Big Bang Theory. The redshift of far-off galaxies also fits the Big Bang Theory. By the time it reaches us, the light from galaxies has been distorted. It appears redder than it ought to. The galaxies that cause this redshift are relocating away from our galaxy. Observations indicate that the majority of the universe is expanding apart. Galaxies would be moving towards one another if time could be turned back. Everything in the universe would have been located in one location if you could travel back in time far enough, as predicted by the Big Bang Theory. The cosmic microwave background, which was first postulated in 1948 and discovered in 1965 as support for the Big Bang Theory, is possibly the strongest piece of evidence. The initial Webb extragalactic programs have demonstrated the need for adjustments to our star formation and galaxy development models. By studying a larger portion of the sky for hundreds of hours, the future Cosmos Web program is anticipated to significantly boost the population of early galaxies. Astronomers anticipate discovering thousands of such galaxies, which will improve our database and allow us to create precise models. According to some calculations, Webb might observe objects 120 million years after the Big Bang with a redshift of 26. It would be a turning point in astronomy if it turns out to be accurate. If you like this video and want to make sure you don't miss any future ones, please like and subscribe to our channel.